Hi everyone, it's Agnes. And today I'm doing an interview with Day. She's in the USA. And we've had a bit of contact together over the years, over the year, I would say. And um, we decided that you would come on and share your fantastic stories because you've got some good manifesting stories. So welcome, Day, to this interview. Hi, thank you for having me. Oh, pleasure. I'm really excited because I know a bit about your story and I'm interested to hear it, you know, the way you share it. So what would you like to talk about first? Okay, uh, I'll start off with how it all began for me with the law of attraction, with uh, how my belief shaped my reality. Yeah. So when I was in... When I was in high school, I grew up in a very competitive academic environment where competition and comparison was all over, all over the uh, school district. Parents love to compare their kids with one another, talk about grades, talk about which college or honors mm. each other got, and that pressure really overwhelmed me. And at one point, I got extremely depressed. Mm. Uh, but one day, um, I'm also a really stubborn person. One day I just, I was falling asleep on one of those uh, text prep books. And then I woke up and I said, no, I refuse to feel this way. And so I think after that date, I started to talk back to myself whenever I was depressed, whenever I would feel I'm not good enough because I'm not getting a, all the A pluses or mm. I stopped comparing myself to other people because I kept reminding myself that Nobody can be me, and I have a lot of strengths that others don't. Mm. So that overall mood carry over to college, and college is another whole set of competition. I went to a huge university uh, in the Midwest, uh, and also with hundreds and thousands of people, I felt very lost. Mm. Uh, but luckily, I had a goal in mind, which is to get a good job after I graduate. And in order to do that, I did a lot of research. I joined a lot of organizations. And through socializing, I realized that it's important to have a, a corporate internship during the summer to uh, make myself stand out. And, and I also wanted to take it as a social experiment and see if I can do it. Because at that point, I was very inexperienced. I only worked at a local ice cream shop. Mm -hmm. So I barely had any professional accolade to compete with all the other uh, higher level classmen in my college. Uh, I remember one day I was volunteering at a career fair and I was only a freshman, meaning it was my first year in college. And typically uh, corporations, they don't even look at you mm. because you don't have enough uh, professional accomplishments or any of those major focused uh, classes so you don't yeah. have anything to demonstrate in the workforce uh, I remember when I was volunteering I just had this huge gush of confidence um, and also looking at and I knew myself by the way at that point I took a lot of advanced placement classes I was already placed I say a sophomore so a second year level yeah. class so it's technically um, in my grade level I was able to do it so I talked to myself in the corner I remember I'm just saying you know what I, I'm great I'm really smart I'm really sociable yeah um, and I kept visualizing the recruiter telling me wow you're you're amazing or and I talked to myself a lot so visualization mm. is a so for me. <laughs> did you know about the law of attraction then or was this just something you did naturally I, that was around 2009 and 2010. So the secret actually just came out. Ah, okay. Yeah. I scrolled through it, but my upbringing was not at all mm. uh, encouraging those law of attraction type of yep. things. So yep. when I looked at it, I was like, oh, that's so funny. Um, I was curious, but I never truly yep. practiced. Okay. But after this experience and after I got the interview and the job for the summer, um, I, I just said, wow, this actually works. And, and no one else believed me in the process, actually, because they're like, you're just a little girl. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Um, but I, I believed in myself. So mm. I, I ignored all those exterior noise. Yeah. Um, and I just, I mean, I, I enjoy spending a lot of time alone. So I yeah. suppose that's one of the benefits to really focus on 
what I want and focus on uh, just my desired outcome. Yeah. I'm not saying it was easy. I definitely had times where right before interview or right before any work meetings, I would just be super sweaty and... Um, <laughs> Yeah, I would, I would sometimes want to hide it. I like to hide in bathrooms. Let's just be honest. The toilet is the perfect. I was talking, I actually had a coaching session with um, John Chirande, actually, yep. and we shared our love for privacy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, TMI, but I'm just yes. being honest. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So anyway, I think that initial summer corporate internship really triggered and boosted my belief in that yep. I can make what I want happen. Um, and there were a lot of people who are still against it and who are against it, but um, I don't really mind. And those oppositions uh, never really helped me back because I personally witnessed what I can do. And the other people, I just, I just you know, give them love and give them encouragement. Um, I share with them the success that I've had from your channel or from everyone else's channel. Mm. Uh, but I think the most important thing at the end of the day is hold true to what I believe and what has worked for me. Um, and yeah, it's it's been going well so far. And um, I can actually keep going with what happened afterwards because I actually use this the power of thought and power of belief to pull yeah. myself back up after uh, some hardships. Yeah. So actually I got a dream job after college. So I have three summer internships um, every summer in my college years. And one of the, I, I don't want to say the name, but one of the largest uh, consumer goods companies, yeah. it's on the West coast. Um, I actually grew up around its products as I was growing up in high yeah. school and college. And I just remember casually thinking every time I would interact with the product, I would say, Oh, wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be cool to, to work for it, to work, work at the company. Mm. Um, I always had the thought, but life would happen and I would forget about it. Uh, but little did I know that company recruited on my college and I got a, uh, got into a very competitive rotational program. And so I grew up in the Midwest. I've always wanted to venture out in the country. So I packed my, all my bags, all my stuff, and moved out to the West Coast. Um, it was a fabulous time. I loved living out on the West Coast, the people, the culture. Yeah. Um, however, due to the intense and competitiveness of uh, the rotational program I was in, um, everyone was under extreme scrutiny from leadership and um, everyone else, the seniors around me. And so from the pressure and from the high level of noise, I started to have a lot of doubt on my capabilities and started to compare myself again with others. And a lot of nights I would work, uh, I would work from eight to eight, I work 12 hour days all the time because I wow. always thought I wasn't good enough mm. and that I had to put an extra effort to uh, make the presentation better. Um, so it was really high stress. And I remember after a year there, I kept thinking to myself, I don't want to be here. Mm. It's not for me. I want to get out of it. And what do you know, um, after almost two years, um, I, was, I was let go from that company. Okay. So it was a huge blow to, to my ego, to mm. my confidence. Um, but luckily, I took some time off. Um, I had a few weeks to just walk around the park and actually have more me time. Yeah. And then I started to think about, I, I didn't really focus on the issue or what went wrong. I more focused on what, what's next. What, yeah. what, what type of environment do I want? What type of work? How would I want to feel? Because mm. I obviously didn't feel right in that previous company. Um, I, I appreciated a lot of the experiences, but obviously it came to an end due to whatever was going on in here. Yeah, yep. And so uh, luckily after thinking through a lot of what I want, I decided to move back to the Midwest because uh, one of my biggest values is my family. Yeah. So I returned home to my parents, closer to friends, mm. and also the type of work environment I wanted. I wanted more technical um, experience 
And so the type of company that I wanted were actually located in the Midwest. So I thought, perfect, my family and the type of companies are here. Yeah. Let's go. So I packed <laughs> my bags yeah, and I came back and I found a really great job, a huge salary boost. Um, but then after almost a year, I started to get the, the stress, high stress again. And then I pulled myself back and I started to think, okay, this does not feel right. Um, even though it was high stress, I was still, I was still doing well in the company. However, I did feel a lot of negativity because self-doubt came in again due to the stress and due to my lack of self-care. Mm -hmm. I didn't get enough sleep, enough food, enough, um, yeah. just I didn't sustain a healthy lifestyle. Mm. So one day I remember just walking frantically in the work hallway and I started to think, wouldn't it be great to work for a big brand again? And wouldn't it be great to, to just, because the, the company that I moved to was very small, so nobody really knew and actually had a really funny name and all my friends would make fun of. <laughs> um, but anyway, I just had this funny thought, wouldn't it be great to work for a big brand with a, a great title? And so um, one of the weekends, um, I was relaxing finally, and I just randomly applied to a job that I really wanted online. Um, I applied, and then I just watched TV afterwards, didn't put too much thought into it. Didn't really think I would get it because the company is huge, and I wouldn't, mm. at that point, didn't really put much thought into it. But yeah. after a few weeks, I actually got a call, and then one thing led to another. Um, I got hired into another well-known brand, Yep. Uh, with a drastic salary boost, which was a really good bonus for yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and so that happened. And so, and then one thing led to another, um, the pattern for me is always, um, I, I listen to myself. I listen to, I tune into how I'm really feeling. Mm. If at any point I feel any, I, I always feel this tightness in like my heart or my intestines. Yeah. I always not a, a positive way to go about my yep. day so I would stop myself and think why um and so I yeah I always I was and then I found your channel actually that's because I was uh, dealing with a breakup also at the time yeah. so even though my career was going well I got into a bigger company bigger pay but yeah. in terms of my personal life it wasn't yeah. really going well and so thankfully from from your channel I learned the self-love meditations the I love meditations and that again rebuilt my self-belief mm. again um, and really I think it pulled everything all together, put everything in perspective for me. And at, and at that point, that's when I truly learned more about the law of attraction, of how uh, your imagination creates reality, so on and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. So there, and I've, I've gotten to a really confident routine now, now that I, I never worry about money um, yeah. actually i i'm never in debt and yeah. i always have more than i need yeah uh, and that's just I, I think because i don't the lack of time i spend thinking about money spent uh, thinking about where's money gonna come yeah i just feel there's never any resistance or yeah. any lack in my life because i don't put Fabulous. focus Fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> That's so great because that's such a hard area for so many people. Such a hard area. Like people just say there isn't enough money and I need more money and I need money for this and I'm in debt and people are asking me, you know, bills are piling up or whatever. So it's like yeah. to be free and happy and relaxed about money is not a common thing really. It's very interesting topic because I do have a lot of friends that do worry about yep. that topic. Um, yes. Either whether it's from a guy who's not treating them right, who didn't text them back, yep. or it's about bills or it's yes. about just drama between people. Um, I will always uh, ask them, so what, what have they done or what do you have today that, that makes you feel good? Right? Yes. I always try to remind them the things that are working yeah. Um, because I feel a lot of people around me and I, I still do it. I always think about, Oh my gosh, this is going wrong. Why? And I would, yeah. I would yeah. dwell on that, but then I, I always uh, shake myself and say, no, no, no. Not yeah. Focus, on, focus on what it could be and focus on what I do want. Yes. I think yeah. that, 
reminder to myself. Mm. Yeah. Um, and I try to encourage other friends to do it. I, I don't try to preach it as much because I don't, mm. I'm not that type of a person, but I do want to help people feel better. So yes. at times yes. I do remind them. Like, yeah. Even though he didn't text you back when you texted him a minute ago. Yeah. But he did text you, right? So he's yeah. communicating with exactly. you. So exactly. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Glass half full rather than half empty thinking. Yeah, yeah that's good. So how long have you been at your current um, position? My current position, I started actually in April. Okay. And it was a really fast transition when I felt that my last job wasn't treating me well, wasn't giving me the right feelings because there was a lot of po- politics happening. Yeah. Um, I feel I wasn't personally uh, getting what I needed. Yeah. Uh, from the job and I wasn't treated right. Um, I did research. I actually started researching in January and February and I got interviewed in March and I I took some time off and I started a new job in April. Wow, beautiful. About a quarter of the year. Yeah, Mm. and actually time flies. So you've (laughs) gone from selling ice cream to, (laughs) so you've gone from that to this. So I know you can't talk about the actual company, which is fine, but what kind of tasks do you do at work? What do you do? Today, um, my current role, I manage uh, operations in a technology company. And uh, again, I got a huge salary boost more more than I actually more than I desire, but actually uh, I desire the numbers and I actually got the numbers. Yep. And um, I, I do manage people now and I'm only, I've only been out of college like five years. Yeah. So I'm still very young and I try to not remind myself of that because <laughs> it does scare me a lot because I do work with people who are 20 years older than me. Yeah. Uh, but the type of attitude that I have when I go to work every day is just, yeah. again, my belief yeah. will exude out into the world. Yeah. So I always believe that mm-hmm. I am my position or people respect me, people yes. listen to me. Yes. Uh, regardless of what the truth is, because yes. really the people's perception of me yeah. will always be how I think of myself. Yeah. So that's something I always tell myself, regardless yeah. of how uh, shaky I am, because yeah. I don't wake up every day feeling like uh, Wonder Woman. No, you know? <laughs> no, of course. Oh, that's wonderful. I love how you said that. People's perception of me is how I feel about myself. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is one of the greatest insights that we can have in life, I think, is understanding that, which ties in with everyone's you pushed out. And Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter whether it's in a relationship, in a family relationship or or at work, makes no difference. And funny enough, my, the first, the dream, uh, the dream company, one of the managers who've uh, taught me a great deal, he wasn't the nicest to me, but he was the one that actually told me people's perception of you or perception creates reality, Daisy. But at that point, his message was, I wasn't good enough. Therefore, my reality uh, is therefore not as good as what he to me to be uh but at that point i was really stubborn i said i am good enough so yes that that was really one of the reasons why i left i'm like you you have no power over my reality yeah. so i and so that's really yeah mm, that's lesson. that's I'm thankful for those yeah yeah, yeah. isn't that wonderful look i'm just blown away because it's like you've lived like twice your age <laughs> in your work career like you've actually got a career now you don't just have a job really yeah I think so yeah. Ooh, it's wonderful and do you love it do you enjoy it I do love it and it's a uh, I would call a startup company yeah so there's a lot of movement going I get to create the type of work that I get to do yes. rather than following the direction of of someone yep. else, which yep. is not very fun at times. No. Uh, and so, and I love the people I work with and I love my, my leadership. They yeah. trust me. Um, and they're very, just, they're very encouraging as well. So the type of relationship that I manifested is yeah. also in the right path. So uh, I'm just really thankful. Um, I, I, I don't focus on anything that's not going well. Whenever I do have those type of suspicion of my abilities, I just, I, I meditate or I go out for a walk. And then yeah. I re- yeah. Yeah. And you can go off for a walk when you're at work. You can just take off for a bit. 
Yeah, yeah. I think so. Right. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So there's wow. freedom in that mm. too. That's so good. A job with a bit of freedom is fabulous. That's mm-hmm. so good. Yeah. I'm actually going to pack up. I'm leaving for California tomorrow. So yeah. there's a perk with my job. And I, I never really wanted to travel for work, but as I got into the professional world, world I realized that's something that would be fun. And so mm-hmm. I just kept about it um and yeah now i get to do um, a moderation of traveling which i really appreciate fabulous so how long are you going for go usually i go for a week but okay. i'm actually for a few days and then i'm going to another yeah uh, another coastal state for yeah a event so that yeah would be fun. oh that's terrific so you've manifested more meaningful work more money and travel within your job that's fantastic i think so yeah i'm mm. uh, i'm thankful yeah yeah it, it was definitely a journey and uh yeah i'm just really mm. grateful for that mm. and i do want i want to share um share my happiness with others i'm in no way trying to say uh <laughs> my life is perfect or whatnot yeah i think that um satisfies me yeah and something that is right for me at the moment at the moment yeah i'm happy fabulous gee that's great that's so great well what else is have you got you've got stuff written down is there something else you want to talk about another topic or you 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 lead the way for sure so i know that another hot topic or the hot topic that a lot of viewers (laughs) and me are very fascinated by is the specific person yeah uh, because just, there's something very addicting of how an, what another person makes you feel. Yeah. And that's one of the actually reasons that I found you, Agnes. Uh, I was listening to one of your success stories. Yeah. And then I, and I watched all of your success stories in like a night. Didn't get any sleep because wow. I was so thrilled about all the other people's success. I'm like, I want to get some. Yeah. yeah. But I think overall, um, self-love self-love and I know you preach that and we talk often about how yeah I believe that I am loved and I believe that I'm awesome why wouldn't he why wouldn't all these other people love me I mean they should because yeah. that's how I feel about myself mm. um, so the feeling does create the experience that at least what I've experienced yeah and so just personally sharing what happened to me um, I met a guy it was a very intense relationship we did go very fast and our total uh, number of time uh, we spent total number like I think four months together yeah uh, we saw each other almost every day and I almost lived with him um, and then the beginning was all like flowers and butterflies I was super happy But then eventually I started to get this feeling like this is too good to be true. And that eventually turned into a sense of doubt and suspicion. And then insecurity happened. Mm. um, And then I forgot to really appreciate uh, what was happening and started to dwell on. Like, it's funny. And like started to dwell on why is this so good? And then I think everything just started to crumble after that. And so near April after I think both of us took an international trip together he just he told me he's moving away to another state and he no longer you know wants to be in the relationship anymore I was I was done I I literally I cried every day I go to work come back home and lay in my bed and cry (laughs) it was it was great it was fantastic Um, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like, was... my, my life is awesome in a sarcastic way um but then after, after i discovered you your mm. meditation listening to your voice uh, it was really soothing and eventually i got up and actually went outside took some walks and the stubbornness came again i'm like no don't i should not be feeling this way yeah. so i forced myself to get up and force myself to to play music more, to listen to music more and do Mm. more things that I enjoy. And, uh, and it took me almost a year. And so now I actually met another guy who, who has a lot of the qualities that I do look for. And he is 
looks very close to me, he respects me, and we're moving at the right pace. Yeah. So I'm really thankful for that. Um, and and it's funny thing now that I'm here and I'm back to normal again, looking back, uh, when I was doing your meditation, when I was at that low point, I was very eager and very uh I felt very needy to get to my ex because yeah. I was so committed to to all your uh, get your ex back meditations just mm. so that I could hear his voice, just so that maybe he'll text me again. Uh, but eventually, I realized that's not re- coming from a place of reassurance. That's coming from a place of friends. I'm still lacking you. Mm. Therefore, I'm doing all these things and trying to artificially generate you back and so to me at that point I'm like this is not very honest so I I chilled out I really honestly did a lot of self-love meditations and just truly feel that I love myself and um and I told myself you know give yourself a month give yourself a month focus on you focus on really feeling who you are knowing who you are and then and then you can start frantically trying to do uh, get your ex back meditations again mm. but you know, magically or not magically after doing your self-love meditations i i really stopped yearning for him yeah i like i think uh, shiva seven did a similar type of story where yeah. he loved himself so much and similar for me i loved myself so much i rediscover my value um and how and I just stopped yearning for all those external mm. things and people. Yes. Um, and I stopped yearning for their approvals or yeah, their, their reassurance. Yes. And, and you're, and a lot of your, I still watch a lot of your videos, despite the fact that, you know, I sound like I'm an expert. I'm in no way. An expert. <laughs> I still need a reminder every single, yes. actually yeah, every single day. And yes. I do listen to you quite, uh, quite often when I need a self confident mm-hmm. And so, but yeah, I just wanted to help others out there yes. who are dealing with this it's it's extremely tough i've been there but i do promise everyone out there that there is it's it's definitely feasible to get your specific person back however i think the key is to get yourself back Mm. to love yourself back again because once you really do Mm. love yourself everything else will definitely Uh, Mm. fall into place if not your specific person somebody better and i a lot of people may not be happy to hear that because they're very uh, committed to that specific person which i completely understand because i was the same way because a few people said yeah you can get your specific person or somebody better i'm like i don't want somebody Uh, better i want him i want him with him totally understand but i think after um i was dating a few other people after my specific person left um and then i realized there there's a bigger world out there yeah because i after my breakup i was really in a tunnel vision i was really narrow-minded because Mm. i was feeling all those emotions Mm. therefore i wasn't very uh confident in that there are other humans out there and similar with money similar with a jobs type of work out there yeah. is a lot of great people out there for you yes. uh, but the most important thing again is to establish the foundation mm. self-love mm. of your um i am first best attitude yeah. can you and, share a little bit about because you know, your self-love was such a big chain game changer for you what mm. kind of daily self-love habits did you have while we're in the transition and even now because i'm sure it mm-hmm. continues on i actually created a playlist i yes. love you too I created a everyday playlist yeah i would start with your self-love meditations and your new channel which i adore um i will listen to a few of those mm. it's very soothing. the music is fantastic and then i would continue to do at least three or four if i have enough time in the morning wow um, more love I am first best because I in the morning I'm really I'm not a morning person I, yeah. I need a few minutes to get into the mood and so I think listening to the words and listening to um, 
to those really helps me feel yes. authentic about well, I, I am first best. I do yes. love yeah. So it's let not- me ask you, what time do you start work and what time do you get up to do all this? <laughs> I actually go into work around 9 a.m. Yeah. Uh, which is which is fantastic. I'm 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 happy that my uh, my manager lets me do that because it's quite late. But I do wake up naturally around seven. Okay, <laughs> so, so you I do, do have quite a bit of time. Bit of time, yeah, and you don't I, tra- I do travel that time. far to work. No, no. So luckily, right. it's within a reasonable amount of time, and I get up, um, still in my bathroom. I would do meditation. I would just. And I yeah. say to myself, today's going to be a great day in a very sassy attitude. I just, <laughs> it is going to be, <laughs> and it will be. Um, yeah. yeah. And my birthday is, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I interrupted you. What's the rest of <laughs> your self-love routine for the day? And then going to work. If sometimes I'm more nervous or if I do feel a little more uh, stressed, I do continue to listen to your uh, meditations, so law of, your law of assumption, yep. videos, um, and a lot the gratific um, yeah the gratification ones, the thankfulness that I love, just a lot of the words that mm. remind myself to appreciate what I currently have. Yeah, little things like the sun, the birds, yeah. the clouds. Yeah. Yep. We just keep listening to that or if at days where i'm feeling an, in a normal happy mood then i will listen to podcasts or just happy music yeah i like it like electronic music because it's really upbeat yeah. so i yeah. do listen to those yes and once i get to work um I, I would be ready to go um and then i actually do again listen to your meditations at during in between meetings or in between uh lunch hours just so wow. that i back into the mood and I always have we all have headphones on during the day anyways yeah so that people probably think I'm still in meetings but I'm actually listening to your meditations <laughs> it, it's, it's awesome it really helps you know do what you gotta do to do what you gotta do mm. yeah so yeah. I do that and then I always try to walk or run um either indoors or outdoors now that the weather's getting beautiful yeah. again after yeah, work after work as well after yes. work fantastic yeah. And I will always make sure I'm full. I eat good food. Yeah. Um, I drink, drink and love liquids. Make sure I'm not feeling thirsty. I'm not yep. lacking yep. anything in my body. Yes. And then I would go for a run to just de-stress and just cleanse. Um, but always really based on my feelings. I never, I never push myself to do certain things. Like I yes. have to do this because I need to feel this. Yes. Um, Yes. I always just, you know, today if I don't feel like listening to Agnes, I'm not going to. Okay? Yeah, no, it's yeah. true. Going more with your intuition of what you need that day rather than, I, like you say, this regimented. I agree. Right. Going with your intuition is a fabulous way to fine tune yeah. your self love. Oh, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. That's a good daily routine. Right. And there's nothing wrong with it because I feel it was definitely a journey because before, if I would miss one day of meditation, if I don't, if I, if I don't feel like I meditated enough, I'm like, oh my mm. gosh, am I not going to get what I want? Yes. But the yes. good thing is, as long as I keep feeling positive, or I keep catching myself when I'm not feeling the right way. Mm. Like what you said, a positive feeling outweighs everything else. Yeah. So, so now I'm just very relaxed about it. I mm. listen to my mood. I listen to how I feel. And then I just do, do as I please. Yeah. That's how I, I've been operating. Like I only eat when I'm hungry and I'm, yes. even when I eat bites of something, if I'm full, I stop eating and yeah. I just don't, yeah, yeah. <laughs> follow how I feel. Mm. That is such a big one. The one you're mentioning, cause that thing, the body, no, people are always saying, oh, you have to have breakfast and you have to, it's like, I'm, I personally, I've never been hungry in the morning when I wake up. I don't eat before 11 o'clock AM. Totally and I yeah. totally agree with you. Your body will tell you when you're hungry and you, you follow mm-hmm. that particular yeah. thing. It's a wonderful, wonderful way, especially cause I get a lot of emails about people wanting to lose weight. That mm-hmm. one thing alone is such a great tip. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. And I, I, I could touch on that too. I actually, I didn't lose my baby fat until like after I graduated high school. So I was a chubby kid because okay. I immigrated from another country. So when I came to the USA, mm. the junk food was just magical. And I, yeah. I honestly ate everything that I saw. Mm. Um, 
and yeah, it what, was not can you me. can you tell us what country you originated from yes i'm i was from china so i was yep. born in china yeah and i immigrated here over i would say almost 15 plus years ago yeah. oh okay so you got to there when you were older you weren't a you weren't a baby when you got to the u.s okay mm, i was an older like elementary school year wow okay yeah yeah, yeah. so um yeah and actually like with language uh all these all these uh skills i had to gain um i i think it just i, I really believe that i will i will speak fluent english yeah you know i i will get those american humor because mm. it took me a long time to learn mm. the vocabulary again yep. i remember one day falling asleep on the sheet of vocabulary i had to memorize i was like oh i hate this this is so annoying yeah um but I, and I, I decided to do something fun. I actually watched TV. I yeah. watched a lot of Friends. It's a yes, it's an extremely popular show, right? Yeah. So I watched that, and that yeah. taught me not only slangs but humor. So yeah, win win. Fabulous. And it's fun. Oh. TV is always fun, right? Yeah, and you learn without effort. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what a fabulous journey! Like it's just so so much you've packed into such a short amount of years, you know, really mm -hmm. you've done. I'm, I'm grateful. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, I'm an only child. So yeah. it's good or bad. Um, the bad, because I didn't really have a companion growing up. I was yeah. really, I, I spent a lot of time alone, which was also a benefit because I had more time discovering what I want and who I am and yeah. understanding what my values are. So yeah. 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 How do you go, because this is an issue I hear a lot too, depending on people's culture okay. and in the, in the Chinese culture, how do you find the, what your cultural beliefs are versus what you love to learn about law of attraction, et cetera, et cetera. How do you find that goes together? That's, that's so huge. Um, actually yeah. I was talking about this last night yeah. uh, with my guy. <laughs> with who? Um, with who? With my guy, because oh, you know, we're guy. at that level yeah. where we yeah. can be more personable. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was not raised in a, I mean, my, my parents are incredibly loving. They're my yeah. best friends. And yeah. I actually live with them. Yeah. Um, so I grew up in an environment where the, the culture teaches us that uh, there's always something better uh, yes. you can do. Yes. So at a very young age, I was taught that you're not the you're not good enough mentality right because there's always somebody better somebody who got one more point than mm. you on an exam um somebody who's who won first place and you're only on second place what? yeah like, um and, and so, but that from their perspective from the parental perspective that's from a place of love from a place of encouragement like i want you to do better because you're my child yes which I understand however for a child growing up that mentality of i am not enough mm. i am not good enough it was that was uh, risky yes and so when i came over to uh the united states and especially in high school where the comparison was so frequent yeah um, it, it took a lot for, for myself to just feel 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 good about myself um i was very good, good at an instrument i was really good at flute yeah so i dedicated a ton of time on my music accomplishments uh, in i was okay at school and academics and i knew how to balance my academics with extracurriculars mm. um, so that i could be a, um, a, a high a competitive candidate for the college that i yeah. wanted to attend uh, but i focused on music because it made me really happy and i was actually i was really good at it so again that gave me more confidence so that's just something that i stuck with mm. um but then yeah i actually didn't didn't end up majoring in music because when I, it was time for college i'm like what do i want oh yeah. i want to make money yes and the thing about musician even though it's a very prestigious a career to have it's extremely competitive um similar to a startup right in the business world because there are only a few yeah. um, out there in the country if you want a good paying uh, yes position in an orchestra so no i still play the flute nowadays still have the hobby on the side too Isn't that lovely that was yeah. my that was my instrument at school too <laughs> I forgot all about it until you, you mentioned it. Yeah. 
moved you out. <laughs> and we've never even talked about that before together. So. <laughs> wow, what do you know? Yeah. That's great. <laughs> yeah, I loved it. I loved it when I was little. Mm-hmm. Well, and I did it till I was probably... I don't know, 16, 17. Wow, okay. Yeah, yeah I loved it. I lived in Canada town. then. I lived in Canada, so not far away from the US. And wow. that was, I loved, loved, loved music. And that was so wonderful to, to, like you say, to play, even if you don't go on professionally, just to play an instrument, to be part of music and creating music and being part of a band at school and stuff. That was yeah. fantastic. Mm. Oh, well, there you go. It. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's so, so- good. I think to tie back to what you said, how I overcame the mentality of I'm not good enough and yes. all that. Yes. I think, again, personality, it's not, it's what I was born with. I'm, I'm extremely uh, sassy. I'm extremely stubborn. So um, when somebody tells me to do something, I, I absolutely have to feel, I naturally have to feel inclined to do those things or else I would not want to do that. So growing up, I was always pretty comfortable with myself so whenever people would challenge uh my value or challenge what I was doing I would I would push back and say no you don't know me and uh, so I think that yeah. and when I was older that type of mentality I was able to talk politely back to my uh, parents you know during my teenage rebellious years yeah, yeah. I was able to you know, I understand where you're coming from. You want me to be successful, but this is how I choose to be successful. Mm. Because at that point, there were still like grades. Look at look at her. Look at Jennifer. Look at Amy. Mm. And, mm. But I'm like, no, this is who I, I I choose to focus on music, and this is really the best that I could do in in school. You know, there are other are other yeah. things out there besides grades. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And so over time, with uh, with my success in on internships and in the business world, they started to see and believed more in my abilities to just establish my own path. Mm. And, um, and eventually they realized, you know, she's going to do whatever she wants to do. Mm. We really have no control over her. Um, and also I, I started to share more about what I've been doing to them. Like if you, if you don't feel good enough, if you want, you know, if you, if you want a new car, if you want a new house, think about it and I would encourage them to do that actually my dad just he bought a new house a second house with with cash and it's which which is amazing but I definitely created that himself and uh extremely proud of them and well yeah and I think for them as they create more in their lives and realize what they can do um I think we also bond over that me and my parents yeah what a fabulous thing to do because when you look at the interest rates on mortgages, it's ridiculous. doesn't matter yeah. what country, doesn't matter what country. If you're paying a mortgage, you end up paying so much ridiculous amount for that house. Yeah. To be able to buy, save cash and buy cash makes way more sense. That is such a, what a wonderful thing to witness someone right. in your family that you live with doing that. Like talk about that stretching your mindset. That's brilliant. Mm-hmm. I'm really? very thankful for for the other all those aspects that they taught me because they they taught me financial responsibility yes. and that's such a valuable lesson, isn't it? We yeah. never we we were never ever in debt uh, even when I was growing up and I'm really Lovely. thankful for that. Yeah. Um, I know not uh, I know not many people grew up with that. That's um, but true. That's I do true. I do feel like you taught a lot of great lessons about how to how to get to that feeling of not not lacking money of not being in debt. So I think that feeling is really important. Yeah. And also that's what that matters. You know, if you yeah. do any what situation. A, you know, what's great is seeing, you know, cause we're so, we so often look at the negative aspects of our childhood because we end up in relationships that we're hurting in or that we're suffering in, but to go back and look at the childhood things that really were such positive valuable things like you say this is what you learned from your childhood is that your parents were never in debt and now you see that so many people are and that they grew up with parents that were in debt and all this stuff what an absolute gem that they gave you in the mindset about money yeah just watching how they did those things that's Mm -hmm. what a positive wonderful thing they gave you there yeah yeah (laughs) yeah and you know what I worked probably 20 years with the Chinese oh. and, and their, their whole, 
mindset around the cultural mindset around the Chinese round money has taught me personally a lot as well, because I remember I'd work with this girl and she said, and yes, a dollar is a dollar. Mm. Never underestimate $1. And I used to laugh at the, in those days, because I'd think, you know, because I was in debt then. Mm -hmm. And I learned a lot about that mindset from her. She, mm -hmm. she was earning, I will never forget this girl. She was working in one of the shops that I did all the displays, the homewares displays. She was earning 12 Australian dollars an hour, which is about 10 US dollars an hour. Okay. And she had bought four properties and she was only 27. Wow. And she bought properties in Sydney, in Australia. And we're talking uh, not a cheap city, you know, we're talking. So that was an amazing thing to witness. Amazing. Wow. So yeah. she did that with, with just her one job or did she, she get did other resources? I think she originally saved a deposit for the first place. If I remember correctly, she okay. bought a very small in a very small place in a not very nice part of Sydney. But from that, she got some equity from that. Then she bought the next one. She bought something a little bit better in a better part of town. And she well, slowly, amazing. So, you know, she was the one that said that, a dollar is a dollar. There's power in a dollar. And I will never forget that. She understood the value of thinking positively about very small amounts of money. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm sure she, she was patient to, to watch really that patient. dollar. Yeah. Her first yeah. property blossom into yeah. more. Great I mean, the, the downside was that she was a workaholic and she worked about 70 to 80 hours a week, but you know, and you know what? She as was long young. As she was happy, right? She, and the thing was, she was young, and she could get away with that. She was exhausted all the time, but eventually, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. she was learning. She'd learned one lesson well, and she still had that other lesson to of self love and self care. But you know what? You cannot take away from her what she had achieved on a yeah. very minimal salary. I was really blown away. That's impressive. I mean, it she's was. probably all set with the four properties. Yeah, wow. and she was under thirty years old. Yeah. So amazing, amazing or something for entrepreneurship. Yeah. Well, awesome. see, I don't know if you know, but, uh, but Sydney, well, Australia is part of Asia, but also probably our population here would be at least 40% Chinese. Wow. So okay. I'm not surprised. Ma yeah. Many Chinese businesses and many Chinese influences in, in Australia, but particularly in Sydney. Sydney Great. is a huge Chinese community. So Love there it. you go. There you go. Love the globalization <laughs> happening. We're all blending. Exactly. We're all bringing good things to the mix. Yep. Awesome. Well, do you want to say anything else before we finish up? I think really that we talked about work and we talked about uh, money. And work, money, books. and relationships. Yeah. yeah, the top three. Right. And just to sum it up, it really, it's, e I know it sounds very easy coming from, from a mouth, but self-love does create a lot, a lot of goodness. Um, and yeah, play pretend a lot of times with a lot of assumption, I do have to play pretend a lot of times. And a, yeah. a lot of people scoff at that. Like, oh, well, you're just playing like a game. Well, yeah, a lot of times, yeah. The visualization and imagination, it is a part of um, imagining game. Mm. But those people that laugh at the, these type of methods, um, let, let them try it. And, you know, mm. who knows? Maybe they'll, they'll start to make fun of it less when they start to get the results that they're, mm. they're wanting. But, you know, from, from you or I, from all those other people that have, have success stories, yep. truly loving yourself, mm. uh, establishing that strong foundation of who you are, um, it will really just blossom more positivity yeah. in yeah. your life. So yeah. I really think regardless of whether you want to generate more money in your life or the, your desirable person, um, desirable house, you just got to love yourself and really appreciate the present and really feel excited about what's what the, all the better things mm. that are about to come. And then those things will eventually, eventually come. So there you go. <laughs> Three. Nice one. Nice one. 
Wow, what a jam-packed interview that was. So many good nuggets in there. I loved it. So many good Fun nuggets. conversation. Are you open to comment, helping people in the thread or do you, are sure. you open to put your email? What would you prefer? Um, I could put my email down. Are you happy or, for um, me to I, add it in? Sure. And I could, uh, I'll try to look at the comments, but yeah. Yeah, I'm more than welcome to okay. break that email. So I'd oh, be happy fantastic. to. Fantastic. Look, I'm sure people are going to want to ask questions because you've, you yeah. know, like you said, like you said, my life isn't perfect, but you have made some considerable headway with where you were and where you are. And I think, you know, sometimes people asking questions and getting a bit of a hand up to, to mentally to, for them, get, giving them a bit of mental help is always yeah. helpful. So thank I'd you. I'd love to meet people, connect with people, even if just Yay! you want me to send you a smiley face, I'll send you a smiley face, you know? I have some sunshine in your life. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you very much, Day. I'm going to say goodbye and log off. You hang on to being here and we'll have a bit of a chat behind the scenes. Sounds thank great. you, everyone, for watching the interview with Day from the USA today. That all rhymes. <laughs>